Former Senate President Ike Ekweri Madu has been charged alongside his wife Beatrice Nwa Nwaneka Ekweri Madu with conspiracy to arrange and or facilitate a travel of another person with a view to exploitation. We'll look at this on The Breakfast this morning. Also on The Breakfast, we'll bring you a sports update with the sports journalist. Don't forget, we'll also go through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Very good morning to you. We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday morning. We're reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. Uh, thank you for joining us this beautiful morning. But Mercy, um, indeed, it's looking bright and sparkly this morning. Uh, I almost had to come with uh, shades, you know, sun shades, <laughs> so your brightness doesn't blind me. I yeah. feel very flattered, uh, but right. that's fine. Fantastic, fantastic. Kim, um, uh, like they say, new day, new drama. And um, of course, I'm sure that uh, not a few of you would have seen the, um, the videos uh, trending around. Um, on social media and of course a trending segment is what we usually start with we look at some of these uh, uh, stories making the rounds uh, especially uh, on social media uh, this particular video showed uh, uh, what looked like a bizarre scene you know uh, for me initially when I saw it I thought maybe there was some sort of drama being acted in the, uh, the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, maybe you had some some of the Nollywood actors or actresses going there to shoot a scene, you know. So I said, uh, "Who is this law? This uh, actor who is in uh, in a lawyer's outfit? You know, what movie should we be expecting to come out?" Only for me to see an uh, interview and a uh, uh, gentleman who seems to be a lawyer, actually is a lawyer, uh, was speaking and explaining himself. Um, he's a human rights lawyer, Malcolm, a chief, Malcolm uh, Omoi Robo. He uh, wore a traditional outfit, you know, sort of uh, looking like a juju priest to the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right, so he caused a stare when he wore that uh, African traditional worshippers attire. I don't know I would call it African traditional worshippers attire because, I mean, some people wear a suit like me, but they're still traditional worshippers. He looked more like a juju priest. And you can see he's, uh, uh, there are two feathers on his uh, wig. I don't know if they're eel's feathers or chicken's feathers, whichever it is, they are feathers. He has um, a calabash with cowries, you know, uh, like a gourd, sort of a gourd. I think that's what we should call it. Uh, hanging on a red strip of cloth uh, around his neck. He used a uh, chalk, this uh, white local chalk, to draw a, a circle uh, around his right eye. And um, he has, instead of his trousers, um, his black trousers, he has a, a red cloth, you know, which he tied um, uh, around his waist. Also on his, on his arms, he has uh, some carries, his hands, his wrists. And on his ankles, he has anklets. And he could near to hear the sound of uh, the anklets we're making. I can imagine that the, um, the panel of judges at the Supreme Court were not slow to finish uh, their, their sitting when they saw this man walk majestically into the, the, uh, the chamber. Um, Anyway, uh, so this was yesterday, Friday, June 17. Um, no, this was uh, last week, Friday, June 17, it was reported. And this is not unlinked with this story to many people, that uh, the Supreme Court had granted the use of a hijab by female Muslim students in non-government-owned school in, schools in Lagos State. And uh, uh, the court issued this judgment following an appeal by the Lagos State government in the case versus uh, uh, Asiat Abdul Karim, um, so this lawyer was barefoot, you know, clad in this outfit. At the end of the session, he addressed journalists, you know, who were keen to know why he dressed in such a way. And what he said was that following the decision of the Supreme Court and uh, uh, the contents of the Nigerian Constitution as contained in Section 38, um, which allows for religious expression, uh, a freedom of expression of religious beliefs, that he was exercising his own right, his own right to, uh, uh, to practice his belief, even in clothing, uh, to anywhere he wishes to. to. Um, we have a guest joining us this morning, and we'll be looking at this uh, before we move on to the next training story. I'd like to say a very good morning um, to a legal practitioner, Ivan Sufeli, who's standing by. Uh, Ivan, good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. 
All right. Um, so, so this is quite a bizarre one. Good morning. Oh, okay. Evan Sufeli is there. Yes. Nice to have you. Uh, Good morning to you. Join us. Yes. Um, uh, Good morning. I hear you. All right. Can you understand that uh, the the public, some some section of the public, and in the in the press, uh, are linking what uh, chief uh, uh, the chief and, and lawyer has done to what happened in the Supreme Court, the ruling uh, of, of Friday, 17 June. Yes, um, the lawyer, what the lawyer was um, is protests. Even though that was not uh, made expressed by him in terms of uh, expression, um, oral expression, but he seems not to be happy with the judgment, just like many lawyers, okay? Because when you have school, okay, um, the school have its own principles and Well, 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 like he, he, he um, rightly mentioned, yes, I mean, we're having some, some issues with, with the gentleman lawyer. Yes, uh, we're hoping that we're able to. Now, this, this, led, this led to um, a dispute. A young lady was caught in the web between that his work caught um, through the process, only for the Supreme Court to state that you can wear. Um, and all that that is of a fundamental right of the as I encapsulated in section 38 of the And that journal was delivered by the Supreme Court. No, that Or what it means is why in the army, though in the effort and every other discipline, which strip themselves of the code the duty to take up uh, traditional ways and other uh, uh, religious uh, regalia to their place of professional appointment. It is, it is an aberration. I would do the justices in court. Um, the the is seems to be deroding uh, the, the professional and all uh, duties of institutions and their uh, professional body. Because what this lawyer demonstrated here is an act of protest okay, um, of, for, for uh, satisfaction with the judgment of the Supreme Court. And that is what I say. And that is why nobody could come at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court justices could not because they knew that this was very big trap for them to make any other statements against them. Another case will ensue. And that case would be that we, as lawyers, we have to rely on the judgment of the Supreme Court as precedent. So whatever the Supreme Court says, that is the law. So people are not... Uh, are there consequences you know, for this his action? I mean, we need to get... Uh, you know, away from that, we understand the points that you've actually established. He's actually protesting uh, the judgment and the ruling of the Supreme Court as regards yes. uh, the, the hijab wearing uh, in Lagos State for students, that particular judgment. And he's saying that he will not just, uh, this would not just be his own dressing, but he would ensure that his friends, members of his family, uh, acquaintance, and in his children would also be dressed like that to different, uh, there are different um, schools, right? That's what he said. But do you think there's any consequence? Are there consequences for his action? Well, um, there, there should be consequences. There should be consequences because um, the legal profession is um, um, a normal profession. Have um, established code of dress. Okay, established code of dress. The, the, did uh, uh, deliver a judgment regards a secondary school that we live in the secondary school. Well, uh, uh, the lawyer in question may have interpreted it and given broad expression that seems to do with the expression of human rights as we can put the constitution. Then lawyers can also uh, throw comment. That's what is that's what needs to be happening here. But I think it should have it should have consequences. 
because without consequence, that might be opening the flood for uh, um, okay for people to now maybe even go for what they are doing here and uh, get a book in their hand and maybe put a book on top of the native empire and appear in so I think the best to come for those who are who, who like to protect um, and then who want to make a statement out of um, what the Supreme Court have done, we are going to spend more on it. And the way the courts or the judiciary is going to handle it. All right. Um, to come to determine where we are going to. Evan Sufeli, thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. We need to uh, move away right now. Uh, thank you. We appreciate your thoughts on the issue. Thank you. All right, that's it uh, on the issue of having the legal practitioner appearing in court in his traditional attire. And that might just, you know, come as uh, a lot of people have seen that has been very sarcastic. But still looking at a top trending conversation. The federal government lifts ban on international basketball competition. And I love the, you know, whoever is handling the Twitter handle for the Tigers. They just come up with a lot of comic you know, memes and very phony posts. Uh, the federal government decided to suspend a Niger's basketball team from all international uh, competition. Now, according to the report, this is following the intervention of some stakeholders. Uh, it feels like um, uh, a lot of persons are very excited about it. I mean, we saw reactions from Nigerians being excited. But the big question uh, still remains if, uh, you know, the energy, the morale for these players have actually not dropped because we also saw comments uh, prior to that time where they said, hey, this will be the last time we'll ever come up and play for Nigeria. Uh, I really don't know what the spirit will be for um, these players now, the basketball players uh, at the international level. Do they still have their spirit very high? Do we think that their spirit has been crushed? And do you think that uh, they stand a chance going to the game, you know, to win it with all of this that has happened? Uh, it's another question that a lot of persons have been asking. But it's a good thing to see that, you know, the federal government have can see that, uh, you know, decided to, uh, you know, consider the decision to lift this particular ban, uh, which has gotten uh, some persons being uh, on the other side of the divide. But how does this impact on the players? Do they still have their spirit very high? Is there a tendency that if they get into the games, they would definitely, you know, win the game? with all that has happened. Kofi? Yes, indeed. Um, this is uh, an interesting one. You know that we've had some, some infighting in the Nigerian Basketball Federation. I mean, uh, Nigeria has been rising, uh, you know, in terms of basketball. You look at the male basketball team in the performance at the World Cup and the Olympic Games. Uh, you look at the female basketball team also doing their best to match up to what the males have been doing and also perform well as well, you know, doing tremendously well. Uh, the, the Tigress, which is what the female uh, basketball team is concerned. Now, um, this infighting in the Nigerian Basketball Federation is what may have led the uh, federal government to say we are withdrawing, uh, we're, we're, we're going to just you know, ask everyone to go home, you know, ask everyone to go home, and uh, uh, we're going to interfere and make sure we try to maybe probably you know, solve the problem. And the federal government's uh, uh, way, you know, this is government now, uh, solution to the internal wrangling in the Nigerian Basketball Federation uh, is to 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 ban or to withdraw Nigeria from all international tournaments. Now, I mean, I personally, and I'm sure a lot of people were elated, you know, when they saw that uh, the Nigerian female national basketball team had qualified for the 2022 Women's uh, World Cup built for Sydney, Australia. Um, and, uh, you know, when the federal government said, you know what, we're going to be we were drawing all our teams from all international tournaments. You know what it takes for Nigeria to qualify for the World Cup in basketball in a tournament where you have the likes of Angola, in a, in a con continent, sorry, where you have the likes of Angola, you have the likes of Mali, I mean, and you have the likes of Algeria, of Egypt, of Senegal. You know, it, it, is, a, it, is, it is not a bad threat of Nigeria like it may be in football or soccer, as some call it, for Nigeria to qualify for the World Cup. It takes a lot for Nigeria to, to, to step ahead of some of these countries, like Angola, Senegal, and Mali, to make it to the World Cup. It takes a lot. And the government just said, you know what, we're going to uh, 
uh, withdraw the national team from international tournaments. Um, last month, uh, Sunday Dari, who is the Minister of Sports and Youth Development, uh, had agreed, said President Buhari had agreed uh, to withdraw Nigeria from competing for the next two years in these international tournaments. It sort of reminds you of uh, the biblical story um, where you have uh, Solomon with two women saying, the child is mine, the child is mine. And what happens is Solomon takes the baby, says, give me a sword, and says, I'm going to slice this baby in half. If, if that's what's going to happen, I'll kill. And then the real mother says, oh, please, 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 um, don't, don't uh, 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 kill the baby. Let the other man have it. And, you know, so, 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 so this is, this is um, I don't know what they were intending to, to, to just spoil every, everything or scatter everything. And, of course, the International Basketball Federation swiftly, mercy, without wasting time, swiftly moved to replace Nigeria, all right, um, from in, in that tournament. They, they, they replaced Nigeria with the team that Nigeria had beaten uh, to get to that tournament, which happens to be Mali. And now they're telling us that they have uh, um, rescinded their decision um, to suspend Nigeria. I mean... It, it's bizarre, but you know what Nigerians should, should realize from this? this? This is the kind of people who are running the country for you, all right? There's a kind of... So what? Are they going to now tell the IBBF to, to take Nigeria back? And if, if you have them take Nigeria back, you know, what, what's the... Because you still, at the end of the year, need to look at the psychological trauma. I mean, the trauma that this probably would have cost uh, these players because at some point we saw a lot of them venting. Uh, via social media and Twitter and what have you, talking about how they feel and how they would never want to be identified with the country in Nigeria. But it brings us back to the issue of saying, hey, was it even the right thing for the federal government to do? If you have conflict, if you have issues in the system, are there no ways that we can resolve conflict? Do we have to go on a showdown uh, because the conflict, I mean, if, if this is like the entire country should shut down, it feels like when you have conflict in a situation, let's all just go down and everything is not working because we have conflict. It just shows that at the end of the day, leadership should be able to provide all of this. But like we constantly would say that Nigerian is a nascent democracy. We're growing and we're still growing. We're hoping that we get it right as we, uh, you know, move along. Well, well, well Mercy, if, if we're saying that, um, uh, you know, there should be a shutdown, um, what, what, what sector, what sector of, of our national society, of national life should, is actually not working? No, no, I'm saying that if we uh -huh. think, I mean, you, you said that the reason for the, you know, the suspension or government's mm -hmm. decision mm -hmm. is because of the infighting that's going on. And that's conflict. No, 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 no the, the reason for suspension. The, the, the reason why... For the, for the withdrawal the, of the Nigeria withdrawal, from international, of course, yes, yes. Uh, and you're saying, the saying, that, saying that things are so not So we're saying that if things so are not going on, should, everybody, should mm -hmm. everybody shut down? Mm -hmm. Should we all... Just shut down. Should the entire world shut down? Yes. Because in, in, in you the, will in, never indeed. have... The, the point I was trying to make was that, uh, you know, um, I mean, the thing that is most not working in this country, uh, the thing that is most not working is government. So, yeah. So, so if, if they are shutting down, like you're saying, uh, or withdrawing Nigeria from international tournaments because they, there's infighting in the Basketball Federation, then government itself should also be being drawn, being drawn from I, national And that's life. why I'm saying because that. Because the know, country the is, is, is surviving in spite of government, not because of it. You and, know. and that's why I'm saying that you uh, know, I, as long as you yes, know, we yes, leave yes. as humans on Earth, it, there would always be conflict. I mean, there would always be situation. It wasn't a wise decision it, it, that it government is, would it is, withdraw. It is very, that government would actually yeah. withdraw you know, um, or say, hey, we're withdrawing our players from the international competition. It's not the best thing to do because you do, always do, have do you know a what situation. It means? And that's why you have do, I um, mean, leadership to yes. provide solution and insight to all of these issues. Do, you know, do they know what it means to qualify for the Basketball World Cup? Do they know the benefits that will come to those girls, to Nigerians, to the basketball in Nigeria? Do you know how many teams in the NBA and all the leagues in Europe and in Asia would say we want Nigerian players. I, I just think this is just Nigerians should realize the kind of people who are running the country to take such bizarre decisions. It beats my imagination. It does, Messi. Let's go on. Um, on the state is in southwest Nigeria. Of course, that state has been in the eye of the storm. Um, a lot of grief and emotion pouring out over the weekend uh, as the... Uh, more than uh, about 40 persons who had been killed in the Owa church attack at the St. Francis Xavier uh, uh, Catholic Church in Owa were buried. 
um, um, lots of questions being asked by Nigerians and those who want to see a resolution of this situation. I mean, we can talk about, uh, uh, or we can also talk about Kaduna, where we also have lots of church members also abducted as well. Um, what's been going on? There have been lots of questions. And yesterday, the leader of the Omoteco Corps, or Corps rather, in, um, in Ondo State had uh, uh, announced that um, you know, some of the suspects have been arrested. Now, what happened was the Omoteco Corps in Ondo State paraded 71 persons, uh, they said, were um, uh, arrested for various offenses in Ondo State, and that they used that opportunity to uh, hint the public through the press that they also had nabbed some persons uh, as far as um, the, the incident is concerned. In fact, the man you're seeing in white and uh, a walkie-talkie on his chest in, on your screen is the commander of Omoteku in Ondo State, he's uh, Adet Tunji Adeleye. Um, he said that uh, they arrested some suspects linked to the attack on the church. He said weapons and vehicles were recovered in the process and of the apprehension. In fact, he said they actually uh, recovered a vehicle that very day, um, is what he says. Uh, they came on motorcycles um, and uh, a golf vehicle. We have su successfully recovered the vehicle and will soon arrest all the killers. It was specific when he said a, a golf vehicle. Um, you know, but some questions are uh, being raised by this development. Um, of course, the, the press men there were asking, um, where are the people you said you've arrested? If you're parodying uh, 71 suspects for other crimes, where are the people that you say you have arrested? You know, we need more details. What are their names? How many are they? He didn't tell us how many they were. How many are they? Um, also, worthy of note is the fact that um, just like the last uh, fake news that came out, you know, where, where it was said that they had arrested some people, uh, the police had to deny again. They're giving a lot of work to the uh, uh, police public relations officer in Ondo State, um, uh, Fumilayo Odunlami. She has had to come out again this time to also say um, that the Ondo State um, Police Command has no knowledge of the arrest of suspected terrorists who invaded, attacked, and killed worshippers at the St. Francis Catholic Church you know, a few weeks ago. This is what the police is saying. So what's going on? Is it that um, there is no uh, 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 cooperation between the security agencies in Ondo State? That's another qu one question to ask. Number two, um, where lies the power of Omoteku to arrest and parade suspects you know, in the constitution of Nigeria, uh, the security architecture? You know, we don't have state police yet. But of course, we want to see that, that, that there's um, a prosecution, arrest and prosecution of those who killed innocent people in that church. And that's what it is, uh, you know, conversation for another day. But we're saying that for those who were killed, we're hoping that the uh, security agencies will swing into action. And these persons will be identified, be made to face the law. And that's what Nigerians are expecting. That's the much on our top trending this morning. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll take you straight to the papers this morning, looking at the front pages of the national dailies. Please stay with us.